Hello you lovely people and welcome to the Figaro shop. It's week four in isolation, in lockdown. You, like me, are probably going absolutely insane by now. I wish this would end. It's a devastating time and it's also driving us mad. Hopefully I can just help your life a little bit by bringing something interesting, giving you something to do on your cars and sharing with you what I'm doing in my lockdown here at the shop by myself. So firstly, thank you so much to all of you that came along and interacted on Facebook Live on Good Friday. I really, really enjoyed it. I hope you got something from it. I'm gonna do it again this week, so I would love to get some feedback on what you'd like to do. I'm thinking of probably doing some sort of my best tips, tricks and hacks, the things that I've learned over the years that I think will help you, will make it easier for you to use the car, will share any information uh, that, I, that, I, that I might have. But also, if you've got any feedback, give me some feedback. I would love to know what you want to hear. I want to try and make it more interactive because we're all missing that massive human connection. And if I can get a bit of that from you guys, then all the better for both of us. So on to today. I have something for you today. The most common question I'm ever asked about the engine on a Figaro. Right. One of the most common questions that I've been asked over the years about a Figaro engine is what do those three screws do at the top of the engine? Two of them you turn and nothing even seems to happen. They're actually really handy. Let me show you today some little tips on what they do. Now the three screws are part of what's known as a compensation system. So what they do is change the idle on the car when something's put in a drawer on the engine. So that might be the alternator, it might be the steering rack, it might be the lights, and these screws allow you to adjust that compensation to bring the idle up on the car so it doesn't stall. Now let's have a look at how we set them. Okay, so when you're setting these up, you've got three screws, idle at the front, two compensation screws at the back. When you wanna set them up, the first thing you do is take the rubber bungs out. If you haven't got the rubber bungs in there, it's not the end of the world. They just stop any damp getting in there. I'm removing them using a little pick like that. I dig the pick into the side of the rubber and then pull it out the way. Now, the first one I'm gonna set is the idle valve there. So, I'm gonna start the car for this one. You can probably just about hear as I adjust this, the idle on the car goes up and as I screw it back in, it goes down. Set it to about 950 RPM, looking at the rev counter to check it. Set it while the car's in park and be careful that you've run the car up and got it warm. You don't really wanna do it while it's completely cold. The next two screws. So, a typical base setting for these is five screws for the one in the, five turns for the one in the middle and two and a half turns for the one that's nearest the back of the car. So what I mean there is screw it all the way in and then screw it out five turns. Now, the most common thing that people think with this system is that it's doing nothing at all because they adjust the idle and something happens, they adjust the other two and as you can see, nothing at all changes. So, the way that this system works, the car has to be in drive and the part of the system that fires one of these little solenoids has to be working. So what that means is you need somebody to sit inside the car with it running, with it in drive, with their foot on the brake and the handbrake on so you do not get run over and then you turn the lights on and at that point the idle will change and you can play around a little bit with those screws. That will confirm for you that that system is working. So if, you're, if the car's stalling when you're turning left and going around a roundabout or the car's stalling when you're running with the lights on, it's probably because this system isn't set up properly. Do not get under the illusion that it does anything at all when the car is in park, because at the moment it does nothing. That doesn't mean it's not working. 
So there you go. I hope you find that useful. Hope it answers your questions. Hopefully it makes your car run a little bit better. And if there's any more questions about it, just give me a shout. Cheers.